Welcome back. It's time for Silver and Black today. Scott Cobranson, and Mo Moten. Did you miss us? Yes, I know we're we're a little bit late here with the week this podcast. It is the off season, so you know what? We kind of do what we want. But I'm fresh back from the combine, and my partner Mo Moten, who's been busy as usual covering the NFL, is with me. If you want to follow Mo on X.com, I highly recommend that. You can find him at Mo Moten, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. I am at LV Gully, the show SNB today. And uh, lots to talk about, Mo. Uh, coming out of the combine, uh, you know, n- n- some interesting tidbits to say the least. And having been there myself, uh, was real interesting to watch what was going on and to see and hear some of the questions that make no sense that people ask. I think some folks don't get out of their house much, and so when they do, they get a little excited. But uh, anyway, we want to jump in on the Raiders. But when you look at the combine, and I know you covered uh, covered it too, and you wrote a bunch of different pieces uh, for Bleacher Report about uh, what was happening at the combine, including you know who helped themselves, who hurt themselves, and then of course going into the draft because that's what the combine is about. But uh, interested to hear your thoughts on anything that surprised you. We'll get into the Raider specifics in a second, but anything that surprised you in total coming out of the combine that you weren't expecting. Well, J.J. McCarthy, I think, surprised a lot of people. Not by the way he performed, but his uh, his measurements. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he came in apparently an inch taller and about 10 to 15 pounds heavier than a lot of people thought. So I think that helped him because if you watched him in Michigan, you would have thought he was more of a slender quarterback. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's water weight going to the combine. Because we know guys put on weight, ch- you know, cut weight before the combine. But uh, – you know, for the most part, I think he satisfied the the height and weight requirements. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these team sites, you know, list their own height and weight for these players, and they come in, and you're kind of surprised at what they weigh in. Uh, that's that was a bit of a surprise, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything blew me away mm. from the combine. Um, I will say that it is a positive that Michael Penix Jr.'s medicals came back positive, past his physical. Uh, no red flags came out of that. So um, he may go higher than a lot of people think. A lot of people have him in the second round right now. I still, I'm probably in the minority that thinks Michael Penix is a first round pick. We'll see if the medicals do help him though. Yeah. It's interesting too, because you talk about Michael Penix and, and, and this is what I want to get into with the Raiders. Cause clearly the storyline with the Raiders throughout the combine was quarterback. Right. It was about the quarterback. It was about uh, the fact that they were looking for one when we when we were there for the Tom Telesco press conference. He talked about uh, the, 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 the opportunity to be that of Antonio Pierce continues to. And I think a little bit too much talk about how aggressive they want to be, because remember, it's a poker game. But he's he's been very clear. He wants they want to be aggressive. He said in his interview uh, an invite only interview for some some media. He said that uh, they don't want a Band-Aid. They want somebody who's going to come in. They want to upgrade that position. Uh, And so that that tells you that they want to be active in the draft. Coming into the show today as we record, we also have heard in the last day the Raiders possibly targeting five, six, and seven, those spots. So the Giants um, and I forgot who else was, the Tennessee Titans, and I forgot who's number six was. Chargers. The Chargers, that's right. So it, Chargers five, are five. five. Chargers are five. Giants are six, six, and the Tennessee Titans are seven. seven. Correct. Thank you. Uh, and so you look at that, and you think to yourself, okay, so five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven, Mo, is not going to get Caleb Williams, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels. Just not going to happen. Those guys are going to be gone either one through three or – maybe even one and four, one, two, and four, somewhere around there. And then you're looking at the Giants. The Giants, we're hearing, again, another story today that uh, they're done with Daniel Jones. So guess what that means? They might want to get up and take a quarterback where they're at if the guy's there or move up a little bit. So this is what we've been talking about since the season ended, right? Which is, yeah, you can trade up and want to trade up all you want. But at the end of the day, there's other – we talked about seven or eight teams that needed quarterbacks. And so the quarterback class has done well. Some people like it, some people don't, but most people agree that we could see quarterbacks one through four, definitely one through three, but we could see through one through four, and we could even see uh, five quarterbacks in the first 10 picks. If the Raiders are going to trade up, if they want to trade up to f- anywhere between five to seven, it tells you that they think that there's a QB4 worth yeah. a top seven pick. Right. So that to me, that's 
probably J.J. McCarthy because the buzz around the combine and maybe this should have went into my surprises. But there are a lot of people that not a lot of people, but there are league sources that say J.J. McCarthy could be QB three mm-hmm. ahead of Drake May or Jaden Daniels. That surprises me, but that's a rumor. and It's not sure. proven fact yet. We'll see what happens you know, during the draft. But apparently, J.J. McCarthy is a lot higher on NFL boards than a lot of people think. Um, I, I'm i not jumping along with the buzz. I still feel like J.J. McCarthy is a late first-round pick, but it's very well possible he goes top 10. And it's very well that the Raiders may trade up to get J.J. McCarthy from 5 to 7. Because, again, if they're, it makes no sense for the Raiders to trade up to get a cornerback. It's a deep cornerback draft. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense for the Raiders to trade up for any other type of player other than a quarterback right. so to me it has to be jj mccarthy or who knows maybe it's bo nix <laughs> like i said the medicals were great for were good for michael Penix. maybe it's michael Penix, but apparently they feel if they do that they feel strongly about a qb4 in this class well and and i think that that's the that's the question too is you know who do they really like of course antonio pierce was very vocal and very public about the Jaden daniels we all knew that because of the prior relationship i don't see that happening i don't think there's any way the Raiders get Jane Daniels. I just don't see it from a from a not just a price perspective, from the competing teams. Right, you have a lot of teams who want to get up there, uh, and and get those three quarterbacks and maybe four quarterbacks. It depends. A couple mock drafts out in the last twenty four hours have the Raiders taking Penix at thirteen. So to your point about uh, him moving into the first round, again, fans look at it one way. It doesn't matter. It all depends on those guys that are developing and looking at these prospects and watching the tape. Scott, one thing I want to make a point real quick about the Raiders moving up to five to seven, and people are going to say, well, if they move up to five to seven to get J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix, they're overdrafting that quarterback. Nope. Let's remember that the Vikings are in the quarterback market and the Denver Broncos are in the quarterback market mm-hmm. at 11 and 12. I've said this for the past two months. If the Raiders want QB4, they're probably going to have to leapfrog the Vikings and the Denver Broncos for Absolutely. that quarterback. So they're going to have to get in front of those teams and any other team that may want to move up. So moving up to five to seven may seem like overdrafting for Nick, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, or JJ McCarthy. But if you're looking at the quarterback competition for those prospects in the Denver Broncos and Minnesota Vikings, you kind of have to get into the top 10 to get those guys. Yeah. And I believe the Broncos are going to take a quarterback at nine. I mean, of course they officially cut Russell Wilson. uh, And so, so they're going to do that. And, and so to me, you look at it, if you sit at 13, Mo, and I know everything, there's been so much positive around Raider Nation, so so I want to just make this preface that I'm sorry to give you some, some stark news, and that is that if the Raiders can't trade up at all, i.e. up to that 5-7 to seven range, um, there could be four to five quarterbacks already gone by the time they get to 13. Not saying it's going to happen, but there's a good possibility it could, depending on how it all rolls out, right? We don't know how the draft falls, it, but but based on the conversations at the combine and based on the coverage we've seen and based on what we know these teams need, that's where I see it is if the Raiders can't move up, then in my view, unless there's somebody that dropped that you really like, which I just don't anticipate, then yes, then you go with another need needed position and maybe there's a guy in the second round you take a chance on and then you got to go get a veteran and then you're into your plan b right maybe even your plan c but i am i am with you on that i just don't see uh i just don't see the quarterbacks lasting that long the way things are going well you're looking at six quarterbacks right well the talk is about six correct. quarterbacks in the first round correct. potentially correct you got caleb williams you got Drake May, you got Jaden Daniels. We assume those three are going to be going in the top three picks, mm-hmm. maybe top four, top five, the latest, right? Uh, and then you're looking at Michael Penix and, well, J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix. A lot of people feel J.J. McCarthy is going to go before Michael Penix. So you said five quarterbacks could be off the board but by the time the Raiders pick at 13. If those five are off the board, then you're looking at Bo Nix at 13 or you're waiting till round two. two for a rattler <laughs> or somebody like that if and, they're there. And the and the word run a combine was is that Rattler is every team's favorite day two quarterback. And I brought up Spencer Rattler yeah. uh in a in a post last month that I said Spencer Rattler is probably gonna be the wild card. Because remember, he was talked about uh, he she should have been not should have been, but a lot of people talked about him as if he should have been in Caleb Williams situation right yeah. now. But of course he lost his job to Caleb Williams, moves his set, goes transfers to South Carolina, 
and kind of uh, reinvents himself there. But this wasn't a guy. This was a guy who was heavily touted. Yeah. When he came into the college ranks, so it's not like you're Spencer Rattler's a nobody. He was supposed to be one of the top quarterbacks in this year's class, or whenever he came out. Yeah. And the team that gets him in day two can probably sees that that same potential in him and probably more maturity as he's growing up in South Carolina. Yeah, and and his 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 draft stock, I think Rattler's um was he didn't he didn't test amazingly well. So uh it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, how you tested the combine's only 10% of the equation. The other 90% is what the team has done scouting you and watch the game film. So we'll see. But I agree with you on that day two. There's a lot of people talking about him on day two. Here's the issue I have, Mo. And this is where people were will probably not be happy because I'm not wearing the silver and black colored glasses, which is the Raiders' biggest need of position is a quarterback. If they can't get their quarterback of the future in the first draft and they go to plan B or plan C, which is Aiden O'Connell, who's going to be competing for the starting role, and some other veteran and a later round rookie, whether that's second, third round, then um, I think the Raiders are going to have headwinds because I don't think – uh, depending what happens now we're, we're hearing the the russell wilson talk come back in again but again is that the answer in the nfl free agency you use to supplement your team you use the draft to build a championship team so that would concern me now if they do that and they get they get a veteran quarterback and another rookie they can maybe get lucky on and then they have aiden o'connell and you're a team we've talked about it before right mo you're a team that is on the kind of precipice of being a playoff team. So if you start looking at, hey, I'm bridging a quarterback, and then you think, well, geez, we won eight games last year. We could win nine or ten this year. You're not going to be in a better position next year to draft a young rookie quarterback. So the Raiders quarterback problem concerns me if it can't be solved this year. Not impossible. I just want to say that because we don't know what's going to happen. But I'm just concerned on how this is all falling, falling the way it is. Well, you kind of have to understand the position the Raiders are in right now. I think we talked about this during the offseason. Mm -hmm. They're not in a guaranteed position to get a top quarterback. In right. order to get it, you have to trade up, and you can't trade up with yourself. You have to have some <laughs> cooperation. So going into this, I understood that the Raiders may not get a top quarterback. Of course, a lot of people held out hope that they would. But that's why you have free agency, and I understand it's not the it's not the – the sexiest way to go about it at the quarterback position, getting getting a Russell Wilson or rumors are going around about Justin Fields, which I don't buy, by the way. But I know getting a bridge gap quarterback is not appealing to a lot of people, but what else can the Raiders do mm -hmm. at the quarterback position? If they can't trade up, again, yep. they're probably yep. picking Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler, maybe Michael Panks if he drops. And then there are no other real choices. If you want to go Joe Milton as a develop as a developmental quarterback, Joe Milton had a, I guess you would say an impressive combine because of his size and able to sure. his his arm strength. But arm strength is not something that I think is that big of a deal to me. You could throw the ball seventy yards downfield, but you have to be accurate. And it's right. not to say Joe Milton isn't accurate, but a lot of people were fawning over Joe Milton and the way he threw the football. His stature reminds you of Anthony Richardson. I'm not saying he is Anthony Richardson, but his size, right. he's about 6'5", 245. Looks like Anthony Richardson body type-wise. Sure. But he's a developmental quarterback. He's going to be a, maybe a round three, round four guy, in my opinion. So, uh, again, what do you want the Rays to do if they can't get a top guy? They're going to have to, I don't want to say settle, they're going to have to roll with a, a, a guy out of free agent to compete with Aiden O'Connell. Correct. And and so then then it becomes a question of who, right? And that's where that's where my concerns start to multiply because okay, Russell Wilson, I don't know. Russell Wilson did not have a bad year despite the narrative and despite the situation that happened in Denver. And I wrote about this several times during the course of the season. He actually from a production standpoint had a good year. The fit wasn't right and all the jazz that happened in Denver. So so Russell Wilson on the Raiders, okay, some people want that. If you can't get Russell Wilson, because he will be in demand, I think there's going to be teams like the Raiders, if they strike out in the draft for a top quarterback, then there's going to be other teams that are too, and they're going to be looking for a quarterback. Uh, you have Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield was thought to have been going back to the Buccaneers for sure. That's sort of fallen off a little bit. Even heard the Patriots thrown around there, a couple other names. Uh, and then you have, um, you have, of course, Kirk Cousins. I don't see the Raiders doing that. So you start to look at that pool of veteran quarterbacks, and then you're getting to the Jacoby Brissett's and all that kind of stuff. And to me, 
uh, that would be, that's plan D and plan D is not a good one, but you have to buy yourself another year and then try to figure it out again next year. I, don't, I haven't looked at the free agent class for next year from a quarterback perspective, Mo, but I do know that in the NFL, if you're a quarterback and you're coming off a rookie deal or you're going to be a free agent and you're a great quarterback who's leading your teams to win, you're not going to be on the market most of the time. I mean, some yes, but I, I just think that this position with the Raiders, they can't they can't change what they can't change, okay? But it's going to be very interesting because they're going to have to dive into free agency first. And um, if they dive into free agency in a big way, if they sign a Russell Wilson, even if it's at a rookie minimum or not rookie minimum, but a league minimum, or they sign a Baker Mayfield or they sign somebody like that, then that's going to tell you that they were not thinking confidently that they could trade up in the draft is, is the way I look at it. Now, to get another veteran to come in, to compete, just a guy, you know, to come in, that's different. So so I think we'll see in the next couple of weeks how it's all unfolding if something doesn't happen before then. Right. I, I guess my prediction right now is a veteran quarterback, come, a bridge gap guy, they do sign mm -hmm. just as an insurance policy because right. you don't know what's going to happen now. We'll say – Three years ago, the 49ers traded up from, I think it was 12 to 3 with the Dolphins. So now is the time trades could happen. So as this podcast, as this episode is coming out, we could, you know, news <laughs> could break where the order could change. Who knows how aggressive the Raiders are going to be. But if I'm if I'm the Raiders, right, and I want a top quarterback, I'm trying to trade up now because no you, you kind of want to help yourself solve the puzzle. Before. You don't want other people to kind of dictate things for you. So if the Raiders just sit back at 13 and let things fall into place, they could miss out on the guys that they want. But if they proactively trade up to five or seven now, now you're at a point where, okay, we're at we're at five, six, or seven. Now we can use that capital to trade up again. Yeah. You know, we can entice a team with, okay, now we have the fifth round pick. You're not getting you're not getting 13, you're getting pick five. If you just want to slide down a few spots, we can do that. So it gives themselves some options if they're proactive versus sitting back and saying, yeah. oh, I will just let other teams dictate it for Yeah, me. and I still think, despite the, the narrative, because again, it is lying season. So despite the narrative about the, the, the Patriots being all in on a quarterback, I think they're just trying to increase the value of, the, of that pick, right? So they, they may be, it could be. I mean, crazier things have happened. You can't go wrong drafting a rookie quarterback uh, that you think is gonna be around for a long time. Although the Patriots have so many needs, that it sort of doesn't make sense, but you know, hey, if you like the guy and you think he's going to be there for ten or fifteen years, great. But I do think that that spot is still the spot if you can get it right. But that value is going to be very, very high, and we'll see. But I do think if the Raiders are unable to address the quarterback position in a really good way, uh, it's just going to change the complexity of what happens over the next two seasons versus the next one season. You know, it just changes the trajectory because yes, a rookie quarterback comes in and you're not sure if they're going to start. But it just it, it puts a whole different dynamic. So we'll see how that all goes. But we'll keep track of it. We'll, we'll see moves starting to happen. I think this week with some of these free agents and even you know Russell Wilson out there. I think a team who wants him is going to probably try to sign him pretty quickly. So we'll see. Now, the other thing is here, Mo, is franchise tag deadline. Obviously, the Raiders. As we record that today is the deadline day. They've said they're not going to tag Josh Jacobs. We do know the final, as of yesterday, the final uh, franchise tag for a running back is 11.9 million, right? So uh, if you're Josh Jacobs now, you're in the position of, hey, if they tag me, I make 12 million and I only get a one year deal. If they don't tag me and they come at me and offer me 9 million a year, $8 million a year for three years and it's guaranteed 12 million, you know, where are you at? So, so it's very interesting situation with Josh Jacobs. I agree with you. I still think they're going to make a great faith effort to sign him. The money just gets really interesting now, as does the, the length of the deal. Although in the NFL, remember uh, when they say guaranteed money, that's all that matters. The length of the contract really doesn't matter all that much. All right. So no franchise, no franchise tech news for the Raiders. Yes. So to speak. But what I will say about Jacobs is, Vic Tafer and Tashawn Reed mm -hmm. had a post combine column, mm -hmm. and they said, "Don't, you know, don't overlook the fact that Josh Jacobs may be Mark Davis's favorite Raider on the roster, right? Or or one of his favorite Raiders on the roster." So I just want to put that out there that we talk about Mark Davis sometimes getting too attached to players and being maybe too personal, not <laughs> Derek Carr, business <laughs> 
not, and that and, you know not looking at you know okay this is more of a roster piece this is you got to be able to separate the player mm-hmm. from the person uh that's not something i baked into my opinion about josh jacobs resigning i i just thought it was more antonio pierce and what he wanted to build and his football team and the leadership that Josh Jacobs brought to the team. But I've been on this train for weeks now, mm-hmm. months, that I I strongly believe Josh Jacobs is back. Now, as I've said on, on last week's show, he's not going to have the same workload as he's had in years past. I think Zemir White's going to eat more into his workload. So with that said, he's he's not going to, if the Raiders re-sign him, he's not going to make north of $10 million getting 50% of the touches. Mm-hmm. If he comes back as a Raider and he splits those touches 50 50 60 40 the Raiders are probably going to want him for less than 10 million a year and he's got to want and that's a bit of a discount for him because he could probably make a little bit more elsewhere on the market right and that's where I'm saying if 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 if, if you give him a three-year deal at eight million dollars a year with 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 14 million guaranteed or 12 million guaranteed probably 12 because the tag is 11, nine. Um, and so, so you look at that and, and it depends. Yeah. It's a three, but again, in the NFL, I know players want security. They want a three year deal, but in the NFL, it doesn't, all that matters is the guaranteed money. So at least he would get the, the 12, $14 million and maybe a little more, who knows, uh, depending based on your situation or the, 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 the mention you had about Mark Davis liking him. And we do know that that has been an issue in the past. So, so we'll see. And yeah, I think, I think they'll try to sign him. Uh, and if the money, if the money's in that range, I got no problem with it. Cause if you were going to tag him, that's what you'd be paying anyway. So, so to have him back and to have him part of the stable of running backs now with Zamir White, I think getting more carries cause he's earned that. And then whoever they bring in, it'll be interesting to see there. And then we'll see what happens with the rest of the league. We do know the two top cornerbacks in the free agent class, of course, Snead, he, they've been tagged. So, so you're not going to get those guys. Still a great free agent cornerback class. So I would expect the Raiders to be active there as well. It's a great draft there, but you can't have too much depth. Uh, and so we'll see how that all rolls out. And I really, I really was impressed with a lot of those kids at the combine. Um, and it, to me, Terry and Arnold is awesome. I don't know that he would be there when the Raiders select. We're seeing some other mock drafts, Mo, by the way, that people who agree with me that they could take a cornerback in the first round, despite uh, what you've said about what Antonio Pierce has said about building those lines. So, so we'll have to see. He was that impressive at the combine. But, but either way, the Raiders will get an impact player at 13, even if it's not a quarterback. Uh, and so I would watch that. And we'll, we'll obviously talk a lot about those guys as we head into the draft. Bit of mixed signals coming out of combine because I again going back to referencing Vic Tafer and Tashawn Reed's piece, they they've said that the Raiders value a cornerback in this year's mm-hmm. draft. They want a cornerback that will allow them to put to um show uh man coverage but play in more zone coverage on the back end. Queen Young Mitchell and would, would fit that, of course. But they also said in the piece that Pierce wants to build the roster inside out. Mm-hmm. So there's a bit of I don't want to say missed signals from the column, but I guess a little bit of gamesmanship where you're, you're still not sure where the Raiders are going to go. They obviously want an cor- uh, impact corner, yes, but they also want to build the roster inside out, which would tell you, okay, maybe they go offensive or defensive line. Uh, it's funny, Byron Murphy the second, who I've talked about a lot on the show and my Bleach Report Lies, was mentioned in the column. Yes. Uh, they talked about also, as I've said, too, the Raiders had three free age offensive linemen. Three impending free agent offensive linemen. So to me, I would go offensive line over corner because to me it's more important because whoever you have back there at quarterback needs protection. The Raiders didn't run block well last year. I think their pass protection was pretty good. But they need better run blocking up front. And if Dylan Parham is going to move to center, you're going to need two guards. Right. And maybe a right tackle if Jermaine Luminar leaves. So you got, uh, to me, the offensive line is a bigger prior. It's a higher priority than cornerback. Simply because, again, the cornerback position is deep to me in free agency and the draft. Well said. Yes. They also, uh, the, the conversation there too, one guy that they really liked at a position that you could say they could use some depth. They have some question marks, although I think it's 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 okay where it's at, which is Tyler Newbin, uh, the safety. Uh, who can who can play a little bit too? So so we'll see we'll see what they do there. Uh, at least you're going to get a sense for some of the guys they might go second third round for, uh, as well if they're going to build some of that that back end of the defense. But I agree. I mean, look if you if you can't get the quarterback, I would go offensive defensive line uh, with the with the first and second round pick depending where it falls. You know, again, some of those guys that are high on their board might not be there, and so then you move to the defensive backfield or you move somewhere else. 
but we'll see how it all rolls out. Okay, we're going to take our break here. When we come back on this edition of Silver and Black today, we're going to get to your mail. Yes, we didn't do mailbag last week. And so we're going to do that. Again, remember, we're going to keep track of all that's happening. Uh, we're doing one show this week. But if something pops and we have a big story around the Raiders, uh, we, we, we will do another show. But uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. We certainly appreciate that. And for those of you watching on YouTube, hello and thank you. Hit the subscribe and the notifications bell uh, so that we can let you know whenever we have a new video. But when we come back, we're going to hear from all of you. Of course, last week we didn't do one. So we got backup. We got to get to all these calls, Mo, when we get back. You're, <laughs> you're watching Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey original podcast. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey original podcast covering your Las Vegas Raiders. I'm Scott Branch, your host, along with my partner, Mo Moten. He's a senior NFL writer over at Bleacher Report, also Raiders columnist at SportsNot.com. Follow him on X. Dot com at Mo Moton, M O E M O T O N. I am L V Gully, also write for Sports Not as well. So uh, check it out. And we appreciate you guys being back here. We didn't do mailbag last week, Mo, so we got a bunch of calls to get to. And there's a couple calls that we got in that were like over three and a half minutes. Now, mm -hmm. we love you guys. We want to hear from you, but that's a little long. Try to keep it to two minutes or less challenge yourself a little bit i have a couple i think tonight today that are a little bit longer than two minutes but if it's three and a half four minutes that's just too long for for the format so please try to keep it as as pithy as you can i'm gonna have to change the message on their mode just to let, remind people as they leave the message that <laughs> we love you but you got to be able to say it quickly don't get me wrong we we, we like uh the the messages yes we enjoy hearing from you all it's just that we don't want you to get cut off. Right. And uh, we want to hear your your entire thought and your entire question. Absolutely. But it's also good practice to get pithy, to get, hey, here's what my question, here's what I got to say, and boom, right? Well, well Scott, not, not everyone is media trained. No. I mean, we do this. We ramble. We do this as part of, <laughs> you know, we ramble. We have we have a whole hour to, to, to blabber on the yes. mic. And we, you know, we do this you know, multiple times a week. So these people are not used to it. So I, I totally understand, but just be mindful of the time because we just want to get your entire question. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to get to that. By the way, if you want to call us 702-900-7869, that's 702-900-7869. Or you can email us. The voicemail is more fun because you can hear it here. But if you want to email us, you can do that too. It's mail at silverandblacktoday.com. That's mail at silver and blacktoday.com if you want to be mo's mail order bride that's mail at marymo.com no i'm just kidding all right he doesn't need that he's, he's fine yeah okay yeah you're good mo's not on the market mo so. oh whoa 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 now people are gonna have questions mo but we'll save that for another time okay by the way <laughs> for those of you watching on youtube i am wearing the one nation one nation foundation hat so my buddies over at Raiders fan radio, of course, uh, with the One Nation Foundation. It's a charity that benefits Raider causes. So make sure you go over, subscribe to Raiders fan radio and watch their show. Give them super chats. We do all the super chats here to go to the One Nation Foundation. That helps the Blitnikoff Foundation, helps Raider Dad. It gets kids who might not otherwise be able to go to Raiders games, gets them and their family out to Raider games. It's amazing. So uh, I'm just giving, giving them some free pub here wearing the hat, but make sure you check out the One Nation Foundation and Murph and the crew. Okay, here we go, Mo. First call. What's up, fellas? It's Mike from Cape Cod. Way over on the other side of the upper north, up northeast corner. Hey, listen, um, just a, a quick thought. I may be out of my freaking mind. Um, just me thinking about this trade piece might be out of my mind, but what if? The Jets want Devontae really bad. And we want that franchise quarterback and have to move up and spend a fortune to get it. So what if the Raiders were to trade Devontae to the Jets and we let the Jets pay for our quarterback? So we trade Devontae to the Jets for first round this year, first round next year, and a second round next year. Two firsts and a second. Then we turn around and we trade our first round pick, a Raiders, I mean the Jets' first round pick, and the Jets next year first round pick, along with a second year pick from us in 2026. So that ends up being what three first and three seconds like they were looking for, and we use that to trade up to number one to Chicago. Am I out of my mind? 
<laughs> I, I'm out of my mind for trying to get rid of Devontae, but the Jets want to pay a fortune for him, so why not let them um, fund our future quarterback? Just wonder what your thoughts might be. Raider! <laughs> there you go. Jake Cape Cod. Cape Cod! I love it. That's our first Cape Cod call. I that think. is our first Cape Cod call. Now, Mo, I'm going to let you just roll with this because the Jets people have been Devontae Adams all day long, every day. And, of course, Tom Telesco squashed that at the Combine. I was standing right next to him when he said, yeah, no. Uh, so talk about, though, his his recommendation, why, why it couldn't happen, why it might happen, why it's a good idea, why it's a bad idea couple of things to unpack here so one i wouldn't say you're out of your mind but it doesn't seem like the, the raiders are going to move on from Devonta adams that's the first thing right but let's let's just play along with the caller and say okay what if the what if the raiders are open to trading Devonta adams for the right price because Antonio pierce was on the pivot and said everything has a price right mm -hmm. so if i'm the raiders and i'm saying okay we want a quarterback that bad we're willing to dangle Devontae Adams out there. I don't think the Bears are going to move off that number one pick. The, I've been saying it all along that Caleb Williams is going to be the number one pick for the Bears. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm, I get surprised at where the combine is that Caleb Williams is going to be the number one pick. Let's say it's not for Caleb. Let's say the Raiders are trying to get up to, you know, three and they do this. Now, in the first segment, I said that the Raiders could trade twice, move up to, I said move up to five to seven and then move up again. Our caller here says move up to 10 and then move up again. So that idea, mm -hmm. let's just separate that. Let's just isolate that idea. That's not a, a crazy idea that the Raiders move up twice for their quarterback. The question comes in is that second trade that they make after the first trade, you know, do they have a handshake deal or an agreement with another team that, okay, if we can get into the top 10, would you want that top 10 pick? Because I'm not leaping into the top 10 and trading Devontae Adams until I get that agreement from another team that yeah. if we get into the top 10, you know, you're going to trade us that pick, right? You know, so because you don't want to you don't want to get stuck at 10, not get a quarterback and not have Devontae Adams either. Right. That would be that would be the worst thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And people will be calling for your head to get fired on the day of the draft if that happens. So you better have. An agreement in place with another team that a second trade is coming before you make that deal. Yes, and so so I I agree with you 100 on that one. And I think Jake, it's a good it's a good <laughs> a good idea. And I think that that where he's going with it and where you went with it earlier with your same scenario, just different picks, was the idea right. that if the Raiders really want to seriously move up to to the top of the draft to get a quarterback, I don't think. And I said it too, Mo. I don't think there's any chance in hell. The Bears trade out of number one. I don't care what you give them. I just don't think it's happening. So then you're talking about two or three. Okay. So to get to two or three, that's what you got to do is you're going to have to compile and you're going to have to have the, hey, okay, if I can get these guys to trade me this, will you trade me that? Now, I don't right. think Devontae Adams is part of it either uh, because great. So you get up and you get Drake May or you get Jaden Daniels or you get JJ McCarthy, whoever your number two is. Who's he throw to? <laughs> right? I mean, exactly. he's got to have somebody to throw to. And I'm not saying... You know, if you had two really good, solid, young wide receivers, and I, you know, Jacoby Myers is a nice receiver, don't get me wrong, but he's not Devontae Adams, he's not even close. And they don't have anybody in between that. So to me, it makes it, it makes it a, a precarious position or a, a perilous position, I should say, because that is, again, you got to have somebody for that kid to throw to. Yeah, you got some tight ends and they might even take another tight end this year, but you have to be able to have some weapons and some maturity there on that offense. So I don't see it happening um but hey you never know but great idea and i like the thinking really really yep. quick i i say that that could happen without throwing in devontae adams so i i i know yeah, the future compensation in adams with the jets i i think the Raiders could pull that double trade off without offering devontae adams in just pure picks yep as i suggested earlier because i just don't see devontae adams being a trade piece and i've said it before that just look at the example in Carolina with Bryce Young. They gave away, they they traded away their top wide receiver. Not people saying, "What does Bryce Young? Who does Bryce Young have to throw to?" You would have that same issue with the Raiders' uh, uh, quarterback wide receiver situation. Again, I know, like you said, Jacoby Myers, solid wide receiver, but he's not a he's not a go to guy. No, he's not, he's a, not number a number one. one, no doubt. Okay, appreciate the call from Cape Cod. Send me some cranberries. Okay, here we go. Next call. Hi, fellas. Uh, this is Anders from Oakland. 
again. And I just want you guys to comment on this whole tizzy that people are getting all worked up about with the uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, rules from uh, Pierce. I thought it was fantastic. (laughs) I absolutely loved it. And the fact is that these jerks ran ring around the rosy against us. Uh, And so pointing out that a quarterback has to go down and the quarterback has to go down hard is something we need to do. And this whole thing, like, oh, this is going to get Patrick Mahomes all worked up, and he's going to be really angry. Well, they've been beating our asses forever, <laughs> so something has to change. And if you want to take on the king, you got to slay the king. And to me, I think this is great. I think it fires up our people and our players, fires up the fans, and probably fires up Kansas City. But so what? They beat the crap out of us every time they play us, almost, except – with our new coach. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, please don't be like, oh, this is going to stir the pot. Oh, this is no good. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is great, in my opinion. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Our man Anders out in uh, the Bay Area. Thanks for your call, Anders. And hey, listen, I look at this. Of course, fans love what he said. And we talked about this last week, right, Mo? Which is, he said the loud, the, the quiet part out loud. At the same time, I think it's been blown up because you got to remember, and I'm not disagreeing with Raider fans on this at all because I think it's true. Patrick Mahomes is the guy in the NFL for the NFL, for the league, for the sport. They promote him. They protect him. Absolutely. So when you say something about that guy, just like in the NBA back in the day when I actually watched the NBA, Michael Jordan, like nobody messed with Michael Jordan. You just didn't do it. So now Antonio Pierce comes out. Of course, fans love it. Everything Antonio Pierce says has a purpose. I've said this before. He has says it for his team, yes, but he also says it for you. And that's great. You get to a point, though, and I think this is where you can start to be like, okay, it's cool, whatever. You have to, you have to be careful only from the perspective of you're going to have to back it up. Okay? Now, they may. They may back it up. They might go out and beat the Chiefs twice next year. But they are the reigning Super Bowl champions, back-to-back Super Bowl champions. So I understand some people being leery about it, but I also agree with Anders, which is like, man, it's fired up. What do you got to lose? You, you, the, 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 the organization has not been to the, been to the playoffs once since last going to the Super Bowl, right? So you look at that twice, excuse me. So you look at that and you understand the desire to say, okay, F this, F them, let's go, right? But, Mo, I want to hear what you have to say about this, because there's another controversy about about Pierce this week, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. So two things here. Well, multiple things here. As a player in the Raiders locker room, I love to hear that. Of course. Because I probably have heard it already. He's just now saying it publicly. But, I mean, other teams, other head coaches probably tell their players the same thing. They just don't say it publicly. Right. As a Raider fan, I love to hear this. Mm -hmm. But the other part of this is, now keep in mind, we all know that the NFL, you can't breathe on a quarterback too hard these days, right? (laughs) You land on a quarterback. This is true. If you land on a quarterback the wrong way, you're going to get flagged. So with this, with these comments out there, anything that's kind of, you know, in the gray area, the refs may veer on the side of flag them because you remember those comments from Antonio Pierce and how they want to rough up Patrick Mahomes? So got to remember these aren't robots refereeing these games these are also humans yep. who hear things have emotions have preconceived notions and all that going into their job no matter how straight and narrow they are they're still human so anytime there's a gray area call where did the player land on him too hard did he mean to do that you have to believe with some of those referees those comments are going to replay in their head and they're going to remember that and that, all I'm saying is you don't want to put a bigger bullseye on a franchise, Correct. on a team that's already Correct. been flagged a whole lot. Now they they were this is one of the least penalized teams that they have had under under Antonio mm-hmm. Pierce this past season. Mm-hmm. But historically, fans know this that flags typically go against the Raiders. Right, so and, 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 wanna, and to the point that most fans feel that. most fans feel it's a conspiracy. So if that's the case, right. you're giving them right. more ammo. That's that's what you're right. saying, basically. Right, exactly. So all I'm saying is, in the upcoming <laughs> season, if there are some gray area calls where the ref, you got, what is the ref? You know, what is the what is the ref saying there? Mm. 
These are human referees now mm -hmm. with emotions, with preconceived notions, and they hear things. Right. So I'm just saying that Antonio Pierce is who he is. He, If he's going to come after you, he's going to say it publicly. That's just just who, he, who is. he is. And I don't want him to change. I, I don't want him to change. Right. But it could be a double-edged sword where that could also be used against. Correct. Him. Because here's the way I said it to I – was, I was having a cigar at my local cigar lounge with a buddy, and he was asking me about the Raiders and the Combine and talking about it. He's actually a Raiders fan from here in Ohio. And he said, and he, and I told him, I said, here's the deal. If I'm in a, if I'm walking down a street somewhere and, and, and guys pop out and they want to have a street fight, I like Antonio Pierce, there's nobody I'd rather have, rather have next to me than Antonio Pierce. Cause he's going to, I mean, I know he's a professional linebacker for Christ's sake, but I'm just saying he's a guy like he's going all in. He's not going to stop until the last guy's on the ground. Right. I believe that hundred percent. That's what you want your team to believe about the play as their coach, all that. That's why we heard so many players. Now, a lot of people are making stuff up, not stuff up, but making a lot out of, well, all these guys at the Combine said they'd like to play for Antonio Pierce. All these guys at the Combine would like to play for anybody who's going to pay them, by the way. Not that they weren't genuine in liking Antonio Pierce, because how could you not like Antonio Pierce, right? Yeah. But to me, to your point, it's like, look. At some point, you got to just shut up and do the do the work. Now, I know it's off season, and 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 Anders is not wrong. It's great to fire up the fans. Now, what I want to see, and I think we started to see it a little bit at the combine, and I'm, I was glad to see it. I want to see Antonio Pierce now start talking football and talking about what he's going to do with his team, and less about the about the, the 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 atmosphere and the culture and all that stuff. It's all important. Don't get me wrong. But now it's time to shift to football. Start. You got two weeks of free agency. So the next time I hear from Antonio Pierce, I want to hear about this guy that he signed, why it matters that. And then I want to hear as we go to the draft, right? That's what that's what I want to hear. I know I'm not the emotional fan. And there's t-shirts and all that stuff. And our good friends sell those t-shirts. But you know what? It, it, that's where I also get concerned with it. It's just like, okay. Now you got to go and win. And it's not easy. I don't care how much you hate the Chiefs. They won the Super Bowl again. So you just got to be able to, you're, you're talking the talk, which is great. I love it. That's Raiders. But now you got to walk the walk. Scott, I just want to interject really quick. And I, and I look, I, this, is, this isn't going to be I about him being say, from Compton, is it, Mo? Scott, you have to be careful with, I guess, uh oh, telling a person, okay, Antonio Pierce is who he is, mm -hmm. right? He got to where he so how is you... right now because because of who he is as a person, right. how straightforward he is. Um, how, how, how I just said that if he's coming after you, he's going to tell you to your face, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can't tell him to shut up now and change just Agreed. because he got the head coaching job. This is this Agreed. is who he is. Agreed. You're gonna you're gonna take him for for better or worse, kind of like a marriage, right? Correct. You marry the person that you that you got with and you can't after the marriage you can't expect that person now okay you wait have a minute to be different. i don't like this about that's you. what <laughs> that's what you that's what you hide in the rarest case that's what you hire True. in in the marriage yep. that's what you marry yep. so i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and say antonio pierce needs to be quiet and be a church mouse now that he's a head coach and 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 people listening that's who he is now whether his team backs it up or not they have to decide that on the field but he's gonna talk that's just who antonio pierce is he is not going to change, and I wouldn't expect anyone to tell him that he should change. That's correct, and and I don't disagree with you at all, and I think it's a very good point that you bring up, and that is you don't want him to change, but I do think that when you get elevated to new positions in life, when you – because life, I think – and I'm going to get a little philosophical here, so hold on to your drinks. Um, I think as you grow up in life – now. If you're on X.com, you see plenty of people who, for some reason, their their growth was retarded. But you look at the situation, you mature, right, Mo? You and I were having a personal conversation about something outside of the work stuff the other day, and it was about maturing. You know, you get to a point in your life and you, you assess. You get to another point and you assess. You reassess and you start to say, hey, am I on the right path? Am I on the path I want to be on? Am I, you know, am I maturing in a way that is beneficial for me and those around me? And so I think with Antonio Pierce, you don't want him to be different, but you do as a head coach want him to know though, is to start to grow. Now he's been in the position for what, a month and a half, two months permanently. So you got to give him some grace and give him some time to do that. And listen, it's very easily, like we all learn lessons in different ways. We learn, I still to this day, and I'm sure I'll have one today. You learn the lesson the hard way sometime. And so what you hope is that he can be himself, do what he got him there, 
do what makes his players happy because they all love and want to go to war for him, but at the same time, be able to do it and, and understand when's the right time to do it, when's not the right time to do it. And that's just going to take trial and error. That's what you get too with somebody that doesn't have that kind of experience who's been through it before. And that's okay because it's raw, it's emotional. And you know what? I'm always, and you and I agree with this when we talk about content creation and all that stuff, you always want to give somebody a chance. And just because they don't have a ton of experience before that doesn't mean they're not worthy of giving it a shot. So we'll see what he does. We'll see how it works out for them. Your point about the referees, I think, is very, very big. Um, and and we'll see. And then as far as the, the Chiefs go, you know, I would say Andy Reid kind of took the first shot when he was thanking him for winning the Super Bowl. So, you know, you could go tit for tat. That's the old Chiefs back and forth. You can hear all the stories from Marty Schottenheimer and what he used to do uh, back in the day when he was coaching the Chiefs. It was ugly. So maybe, just maybe, if the Raiders can put together a couple wins in a row against the Chiefs, Mo, then it's back to being a rivalry and all this is was was beautiful theater. Absolutely. I, I just want to make the clear delineation that it's one thing to choose to tell a person, okay, choose your words carefully. Oh, yeah. It's another thing to tell a person to completely shut up. And I think that is yeah, that's what's getting guys like Michael Lombardi in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, media yeah. And, and, fans. And, and, and you got to be you got to be careful i'm just saying you have to be careful about telling another grown man to shut up because in some walks of life that that can get you into a yes place. and and the one thing i'll say because i know people a lot of raider fans don't care for michael michael comes on this show all the time he's always been very gracious and come on to talk with us about raiders whether you like to hear it or not and he's also been a very, very, uh, I think, good, good person to me and to the show, uh, giving us information, teaching us about this, teaching and, and understanding the inner workings of an NFL front office, not the Raiders particularly, but just in general. And some of what he was said, I'm not going to defend Michael because he defends himself. You can hear him on his latest podcast. He talks about it. Some of those comments were split from two different comments and put together to, to make it more explosive. But, but I, but to your original point, which is, yeah, you don't tell somebody to shut up. But I think what you do is, and I think this is why he's got Marvin Lewis there and he's got Tom Coughlin, right? Which is like, hey, he says this kind of stuff and maybe then he does his daily check-in or whatever the interval he has with those guys. And they say, hey, guys, hey, look, Antonio, it's great. Fire your team. Up the way. Here's, here's something to think about next time you talk about it, though, right? And that's what he's getting from those guys. He doesn't need it from us or from the media. We don't know shit about that stuff. He has the guys in place. So we'll see what happens. So you gotta you gotta figure that's why he's got Marvin Lewis and that's why he's got Tom Coughlin. So we'll see. All right. We went on along. I, Anders, great call, by the way. You wanna say something else before we go on the next call? We only got like four more to go, Mo. Just, just, just this is a quick comment. Just as coaches and players have to be careful how they phrase and word things, I think in the media we also have to be careful of how we say certain things because it could come off very disrespectful. Correct. Just gonna say that. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing too, is you have also I think today you have a lot of situations with the way social media is. And listen, there's people out there, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tweet stuff out. We'll put stuff up uh, on our show or talk about stuff on our show and be, Oh, it's clickbait. There is clickbait out there. And that's the kind of explosive stuff where people melding together quotes or they're taking a quote on the context or they're making up something. People, there are people and you guys know them national accounts with hundreds of thousands of viewers who make crap up. So you have to be careful. And to your point, it's all how you say things. One of the lessons I learned from my mother growing up as a kid, not what you say, it's how you say it. Say it. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Anders, thanks, man. We appreciate you very much. And thanks for uh, getting us on a huge sidetrack there, which was great, though. Great discussion. Okay. Next call. Here we go. Hey, Scott. Hey, Mo. How are you guys? It's Tara checking in Derek! with you guys um, in Moline, Illinois. Uh, here for work. Um, hey, uh, breaking news. Russell Wilson is going to be released uh, by the Donkeys. Um, they still have to pay his fully guaranteed $39 million contract. So you got to wonder if that changes the trajectory, which what with uh, Telesco's plans in free agency at the quarterback position. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think somebody, uh, he's going to have a lot of options, especially considering he's getting all the guaranteed money from Denver. Uh, I think Mike Lombardi needs to zip it. Uh, for him to say that somebody needs to pull Antonio Pierce aside and shut, tell him to shut up is ridiculous. Just because his sons couldn't cut it with the Raiders, I mean, it sounds like a personal thing. He needs to move on. Um, and I was reading some uh, projections about what it's going to cost to move into the top three. And number one pick is outrageous, you guys. Uh, three number one picks, three second round picks, excuse me, three first round picks, three second round picks, two starting players. To move to number two would be two first-round picks, two second-round picks, 
and a uh, in, in a starting player. But the third overall pick would be two first round picks, one 2025 20, second round pick, and a starting player. I think the Raiders should really realistically focus on going for the third overall pick um, because you're going to get one of the three guys you covet, and hopefully they have some flexibility with who they want. Uh, it's going to be either May. Jane Daniels or Caleb Williams. We'll take Caleb Williams out. He's going to go number one. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, you can't give up so much to move up in the first overall pick. Let's go with number three. Sounds feasible and realistic. Uh, have a great week, guys. Looking forward to your next show. Raider Nation. Bye-bye. Tarek from Moline, Illinois. I love how he's never in the same city. It's good stuff. Couldn't guess where Tarek was this time, I guess. So- uh Iowa last time. He was in Iowa last time. So Tarek, I always appreciate it because I can, I think we might do, you know what I'm going to do, Tarek, from now on, because he calls into every show and we appreciate that. I had somebody in YouTube like, why do you let the same callers in every time? I'm like, because they have good calls. We're a meritocracy. If your call sucks, it doesn't, no, I'm just kidding. We don't get sucky calls. We get long calls, but we don't get sucky calls. So anyway, but Tarek, I'm going to get a map and I'm going to start putting pins. Mo, I'm going to show it on this, <laughs> wherever he's calling from. I love it, though. That's good. He's working out there for his family, working hard. So thank you, Tarek. So a couple of things here, Mo. I want to start with this, which is, again, and you, I think you wrote this in one of your Sports Not pieces about the draft and the Raiders. This idea that it's too expensive. I, who says? If you're talking about two number one, to get up to the number two spot, what do you say? Two number ones, two number twos, and a three or whatever it was. Like, if, if you're talking about a one, a two, in, in, in future years, do you, I mean, it's not like the Raiders are the Panthers or the Raiders are the Patriots where your team is so devoid of talent that you have to build everything through the draft. Now we know the Raiders still have work to do. Don't get me wrong, but they're not so They're not a two win team. Okay. They were on the cusp, whether you believe they could have made it or not of the playoffs. So to me, if that's the guy you want, like, and I'm I'm now, my favorite guy has become Drake May. I think he's the most pro-ready quarterback. I just was going to say that. But anyway, if you want to go get Drake May at number two and Washington was going to consider it, which I don't think they would, but if they did, I don't think that's too much to pay if that's the guy you really believe. And of course, there's risk with everything. If that's the guy you believe is going to lead your team to the Super Bowl eventually, you believe it, then to me, that's not overpaying. God, it's very simple to me. And I said this on the X. Mm-hmm. What would you give up for your French for a franchise quarterback? Because that's the price you're going to pay, regardless of what. <laughs> if you wanted a Lamar Jackson, if you want a Josh Allen, if you want a Patrick Mahomes, and I'm not saying those players specifically, but just a franchise quarterback, what do people think it's going to cost? <laughs> it's going to cost multiple ones and probably some day two picks with that. That's the cost. That's the going rate for a franchise quarterback if you were to trade for one. So you have to expect that if you're going to trade up. Now, Tarek did say the number three spot is more is a lot more feasible than one, two. But yeah, and I think that's the most realistic spot that the Reds could trade up if they're going to squeeze into the top three. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to, you know, if you're going to move up, it's going to cost you. And I think the Bills GM Brandon Bean had a great quote. A lot of people he said that people question the Bills for trading up and saying they gave up too I much for Josh Allen. Now, not the same situation because they traded up to number seven, wasn't a top three spot. Yep. But he said, look, if if Josh Allen, you know, doesn't work out, we get fired. But if we stand pat and, it, you know, and got, you know, if God we have is there, basically, we could get fired anyway. Yeah. So it's like you're going to get credit. And I said either this way. on the X. You're going to get criticized either way. If you move up for a quarterback and, and you win, yeah. people are going to say, what, what are you doing? You moved up for a bus. If you stand <laughs> pat and that guy that you wanted becomes a star, people are going to say, what were you doing? Why didn't you trade up for that guy? He was available for you. Right. So damn if you do, damn if you don't, you get it done anyway. There's no to me, there's there is a price tag on a on a franchise quarterback, but you you're gonna have to give up a lot, regardless of what. And Brandon Bean phrases so perfectly that you know if he's great, then nobody gives a, a you know what. If he's bad and we get fired, we move yeah. On. And, and and I you guys again. I know people will argue till they're blue in the face, and I'm not going to argue with somebody who's not open to consideration. But without a quarterback, you will not win. You will not win. Yes, it's not a it's a team game. Yes, you need an offensive line. Yes, you need a defensive line. Yes, you need a secondary. Yes, you need wide receiver. Don't get me wrong. But I, you know, I had this guy coming at me on X.com. It's like, 
Yeah, but only one quarterback out of the last 11 years that was drafted in the first round has won a Super Bowl. And I'm like, okay, that's Patrick Mahomes. He's won three. Uh, but you're you're being you're cherry picking, but look at those quarterbacks because they didn't. Yes, the goal is to win a Super Bowl, but the goal is to be, be, be would you say that the Bills failed, Mo? Let's say they never win a Super Bowl. Okay. And and I hope for the people of Buffalo that's not true. But let's say they never win a Super Bowl. Would you say that not that drafting Josh Allen in the first round was a mistake because he didn't win the Super Bowl? No. Dan okay. Marino never won a Super Bowl. We can go down the line. Okay. So you got to do whatever you can to get there. And to me, the price, if you bust on them, you're right. And it goes back to what you also said about putting your opinions out there, right? <laughs> Which is, if you don't give your opinion, then you can never be criticized for it, right? And so you're just a quiet person in the corner and you can criticize everybody else because you're never putting yours out there. When you put yours out there, it's the same thing. And when I was th when I was there for that co press conference, when we gave, being gave the press conference, it was great because he's absolutely right. Because a lot of journalists don't think that way. They say, well, your, your job's on the line. He's like, my job's on the line every year. If I don't win... It doesn't matter. So, so you got to yeah. do with what you believe is right. Ba basically, he's saying it, if it works out, because they believe in Josh Allen, obviously. Mm -hmm. And basically, say if it works out, no one, no one says anything, you know. But, but if, if they stand pat with who they had, I believe it was Terod Taylor at the time, as their starter the previous year, and they and they go, you know, seven and ten, people are calling for his head anyway. So you might as well take a swing if you believe in the guy that you're trading up for. Is was the point of the whole um this comment yep yep so no i, I agree I, sorry about I, that I, I had to switch into my my hat i don't know if you can see my i i just i just i just go back to my to my mantra over the past few weeks scare money don't make money yes take a shot if you, if you believe in what you're doing if you believe in your scouting team if you believe in the process that you're going through yep take a swing. yep all right so i had to put my hat on wardrobe for this. change for scott yeah you see wardrobe my hat can you scott. read my hat don't be a chicken <laughs> You know, it's very appropriate. You know what this is? It's a sucker. And you know what that is? That would be a chicken sucker. Don't say it, Mo. We're a family show. It's a, it's a, it's a male chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. It's a, it's yeah. a male chicken. Yeah. So. I meant to put oh, this on for the yeah. mailbag, but not that we have any that call in. But <laughs> with the quarterback talk, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Oh man. All right, we're moving on. And thanks again for your call, <laughs> <laughs> Tarek. We appreciate it. For those of you that are listening, you're like, what are you laughing at? You have to watch on YouTube. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Okay, here we go. Hey, Scott and Mo. This is Dominique from the Show Me State, St. Louis. St. Louis! How you guys doing? I got a quick trade proposal for you guys. Uh oh. This is to move into the top two of the draft to select, hopefully, Jaden Daniels. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you think. Malcolm Koontz, Jacoby Myers, Divine Diablo, oh. a first and a third this year, and a first next year. Do you think that's still not enough? Do you think that's too much? Let me know what you think about that trade proposal. Um, me personally, if I'm another team, I think that's great. I think it's great for the Raiders as well. But let me know what you guys think. I'll be listening. Appreciate it. Bye bye. All right, Mo. Tell him. Tell tell GM Dominique in St. Louis, home of the Battle Hawks, by the way. Uh, tell him what you think. Now, if that's, I believe he said that's trading up for Jade Daniels. Is that's correct. Correct on that? That's correct. He said to get to number that, two, but I, he might okay. have meant three. If that's, if, if that's to get up to two, three to get Jaden Daniels, I'm okay with it. It would sting to part ways with Malcolm mm -hmm. Koontz because of how he's come, how he came on last mm -hmm. season. But if it's for a quarterback that I really want, then look, I'm hoping that Tyree Wilson develops and then you can kind of replace Malcolm Kuntz with Tyree Wilson's uh you know progress and have him opposite Max Crosby and then draft and still draft the defensive tackle and hope that your pass rush is still okay. But if it's trading up for a quarterback like a Jaden Daniels, mm -hmm. I'd do it. If if a team is is accepting on the other end, I would I would do it. Yeah. I, you know, the picks, whatever, you know, the picks are lottery lottery tickets any anyway. Right. Again, I want to reiterate that I'm not shopping Malcolm Koontz, but if you're saying that we, if, they if, want Malcolm Koontz, if we don't have to give up Devontae Adams, we don't have to give up Max Crosby, and it's you want Malcolm Koontz, if we can get up to two or three, I'm fine with it to get Jaden. Right, because if he's in demand, um, uh, like a Malcolm Koontz, and somebody wants him, and, and it get, helps you get your franchise quarterback, and again, I, I, I love the way he's progressed, and he's grown. It's It's right. been a great, great story, and good for him as a young man. But he's not an all pro. He's not a guy that's, he's not Max Crosby. I'll put it that way. I guess that's the best yeah, way yeah. to make it. So, all right. 
Dominique, thanks, man, for St. Louis. And uh, GM, GM Dominique. What's that? GM, Dominique. GM Dominique. That's right. He's he's uh, he's he's going to have to quit his day job pretty soon if that trade pulls off. All right, <laughs> we're moving on now. This is Anthony in Idaho Falls. We're all over the country today. I love it. Hey Scott. Hey Mo. Um, uh, this is Anthony calling in from uh, Idaho Falls. Um, I just you know I, I, I'm a big listener of the show. It's my first time calling in, and you know. Um, I've been taking in some of guys' points about trading up for a quarterback. And while I do admit that I've been pretty apprehensive about trading up that far for a quarterback, um, I'm pretty open to it. And I still, I think I'd be a little weary, but I think if it happened, it wouldn't make me mad or anything. I wouldn't be angry about it. I guess what I think about is, yes, you know, the, when the Chiefs traded up for Patrick Mahomes, you know, it worked out well for them. But, you know, also of note, the Chiefs were already a perennial playoff contender, even with Alex Smith, and their team was pretty good, and they had a very good head coach. So I think they were in a better position to trade up all that way for a quarterback. Um, the Raiders, although, you know, even though I do think that we are um, very close, I just think that um, – I guess what makes me nervous is that we haven't been – good enough for so long for me to feel comfortable about that. But I guess once it happens, um, we'll hope for the best, you know. As long as we're not gutting the team too much, I know we'll give up draft capital, but I think roster-wise, if we keep it about as is, you know, have a good free agency, I think it'll work out fine. I think, and I think it's worth the risk um, at the end of the day. Um so, so yeah. Well, and also, I just don't want to end up like the Panthers, who traded up for <laughs> their quarterback, but also um, they didn't have a very good offense in the first place, and they took away their number one receiver. And so, there you go, uh, Anthony in Idaho Falls. I appreciate it. He just brought up our point that we made about Devonte Adams earlier, right? Yes, yeah, Scott. And I want to take this call yeah. because I've heard that pushback a lot about the Chiefs were in position to trade up for a quarterback and. They were in a better spot to to take a chance because they were a perennial playoff contender. I want to take that. I want to isolate that because I've gotten that pushback a lot. Good. I was going to talk people. about it too. And I and I under I understand that logic. Yep. But I'll ask those people and our caller to Anthony: Is there a wrong time to trade up for a franchise quarterback? Do you have to be a playoff a perennial contender or borderline playoff team to trade up for a quarterback? By the way, the Raiders borderline playoff team had Antonio Pierce taken over earlier. Who knows where the Raiders would have ended up, but I, I push back on, you have to be a perennial playoff contender to take a swing. There is to me, in my opinion, there is no wrong time to trade up for your guy. Yeah. If, if right. I'm five and 11 and I, if I'm five and 12 and my team needs a quarterback and I have a shot to get a franchise guy, I'm taking the swing. Yeah. Whether I'm five and twelve or twelve and five or eleven and six or six and eleven, if I have a chance to get my guy and set my franchise straight, I'm doing it. By the way, the Bills traded up to seven. They were a playoff team, but they were nine and I believe they were nine and eight, and they had a point. They had a negative point differential. So while they made right. the playoffs, they weren't that much better than the Raiders when they traded up for Josh Allen. Yeah. Now, I know that's spot seven and not spot one, two, or three, but it's not like the Bills were some juggernaut, some perennial playoff contender, excuse me, when they traded up for Josh Allen. Right. Again, they were nine and eight, and they had a negative point differential, which means they got outscored overall during the season. They weren't that good. Right. But they saw a chance to move up for their franchise guy, and they did it. And again, yeah. I want to say this again. Whether I'm five and twelve or twelve and five, and I don't have and I don't have my franchise quarterback, I'm taking a swing. Right. And and I could also turn it around the other way, which is the Chiefs had a good quarterback, right, in Alex Smith. And again, you look at the the two years previous. So Mahomes was drafted in 17. Uh, in 16, the Chiefs were 12 and 4. In 15, they were 11 and 5. In 14, they were 9 and 7. In 13, they were 11 and 5. The year before Andy Reid got there, they were 2 and 14. He went, he took a 2 and 14 team and went 11 and 5 the next year, right? Now, Alex Smith comes in there. And yes, they had a good quarterback, but they didn't go get another court. They didn't go get Mahomes because they had this glaring need for a quarterback, but they realized they needed because they couldn't get past it. You know, I respect Alex Smith to the end of the earth because of what he's gone through too. 
He was a good quarterback. He was not a transcendent quarterback who's going to get you over the hump. So they get Mahomes. He sits for a year. They lose in the wild card again with Smith. The next year, they lose the playoffs, uh, the conference championship with Mahomes at quarterback. And then they won the Super Bowl the second year. So again, like he was the player. They looked at him and said, you know what? This is the guy. This is the guy that gets us over the hump. So whatever we got to pay, we're going to get him. It doesn't matter what's going on now. You always get better. It doesn't matter if you have the best running back in the league. If there's a guy you think is going to do it better, you go get him. If it's a wide receiver, it's a lineman. It doesn't matter. You have to improve your team. So I agree with you 100% there. But I appreciate and I, and I Anthony's get, And I get the logic that if you're a perennial playoff tender and you will from the quarterback, doesn't yeah. hurt you that much because you're still a playoff team. But remember, the Raiders finished eight and nine. Mm -hmm. They're on the upswing. They're trying to make a playoff right. push. Right. It's not like they're, as you said, two and in, in, in fifteen. Right. Whole it's different story. It's not like you're, you're right. You you could still move draft capital and not give up Devontae Adams and not give up Max Crosby right. or not give up any of your core players because, as I said, draft picks are lottery tickets anyway. You you don't know what these draft picks are going to turn into, yes. including the quarterback. Yes. So why not? Why not take a swing while you have a team that went eight and nine, wasn't terrible, and with the right quarterback, you can get yourself into the playoffs. Right. It, I, I think the Rays are in position to make a move for a quarterback. And that, that's that's my point too. And 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 well, as a young quarterback, he's going to struggle. You don't know that. I mean, you saw C.J. Stroud this year, what he was able to do. I know we keep going back to C.J. Stroud, but it, my point is, you don't know. A, a rookie can come in, especially with a team. If they bolster the offense with some more veterans, especially on the offensive line with a young offensive lineman, you have Devontae Adams, you have a, a second-year tight end who I think is going to break out this year. You have all of that, and then you have that defense. And oh, by the way, he mentioned the coaching situation in Kansas City. Everybody's excited about Antonio Pierce, so what, don't you want to give him everything he needs to win? And so I think that that situation, and to your point, they if he would have coached the whole year, they probably, let's say, made the playoffs, right? Because if they play like they did – Towards the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, even if it took them a few games to get into it, uh, we'd be talking about a whole different season last year. So anyway, but uh, Anthony in Idaho Falls, I appreciate you closing out the show. We had some more calls. We will get to them. We're already over an hour, almost an hour and 10 minutes. We try to keep this to your commute time, but since we're only doing a show, this one show this week, we wanted to make sure we got to some of the calls from last week and from this week, and we'll continue to do that. 702 900 Seven eight six nine. That's seven zero two seven. Excuse me, seven zero two nine hundred seven eight six nine. Of course, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe and the notifications bell. Mo, before we check out of here, we got about two minutes left. What do you got going this week? You want to tell folks about? Well, first of all, we might have to do two mailbag shows. You know, coming <laughs> up, we get especially. fired up with some of the questions. Yes, but, uh, coming up on uh, Sports Night, I'm going to talk about potential free agent targets for the Rays because of course free agency is next week the tampering period starts on Monday the official new league year starts on Wednesday so I'll dig into the free agent market because there are some guys who were just released over the past several days mm -hmm. so there are some different names out there that some fans should get to know just in case they're their potential targets of the Raiders Christian Wilkins by the way the Dolphins not tagging him looks yeah. like he could hit the market played in Patrick Graham's system would be a dream talking for the Rays, somebody I will talk about in that piece. Also, before the temporary period starts, I'll have another SportsNot.com piece out with my fridge, the big board for the Raiders. As we all know, we hear big boards big for the board. draft. I'm going to have a big board for the Raiders and for agency. And then I will have a BR live the following week, breaking down the Raiders for agent pickups and what their roster looks like after the first couple of ways of free agency. There you go. You're up to date on everything Midtown Mo. So... We appreciate it, man. Uh, and uh, we will have coverage here as well. Like I said, if something crazy happens between now and the end of the week, we'll probably have another right. show. We'll get back to two shows next week. And I think, Mo, depending on what happens, especially if the Raiders make some moves, I think you're right. I think we'll probably do uh, our Tuesday show around news and what's going on from a personnel perspective. And then Thursday, we'll probably devote our whole show to the mailbag. And we'll do yes. some news at the top, but we'll do mostly a complete mailbag show. So 702-900-7869, it's in the description below of both the podcast and the video. So if you forget the number, it's there. Or you can email us at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. Uh, but uh, make sure you also check out both of our works up on Sports Not. And we certainly appreciate you being with us. I'm excited. A lot of stuff's going to come down. I think it's going to be a busy week from a news perspective. We'll see if the Raiders are involved there. I know next week there will be as the new year starts. 
We'll have a lot to talk about. Mo, my friend, as always, I appreciate you, and we will talk to you next time. Sounds good. All right, for our producer, Mike Robier. Yes, the man behind the scenes who makes it all happen. We appreciate him and thank him for his contribution to the show. For Mo Moten, I am Scott Branson. This has been Silver and Black today. Everybody, have a great rest of your week and a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.